The real estate landscape has changed significantly since the beginning of the year with interest rates rising, home prices dropping, and prospective borrowers wondering what it all means for them. If someone is looking to buy a home in today's market, what will it take to qualify? Lindsay Shores from School's First Federal Credit Union is here to shed some light and help borrowers on what to expect. Hi, Lindsay. Good morning. So Lindsay, qualifying for a home loan is always something that seems difficult. Can you help us understand what lenders are looking at when they determine whether they are going to approve someone? Absolutely, that's a wonderful question. Some of the basics that lenders are going to begin with is looking at the gross monthly income for the household. That's going to be everybody that is applying for the loan or going to be on that obligation. We're going to be looking at any outstanding debts, what does your credit score look like and your assets? Now, debt to income ratios, we want to, again, look at the gross monthly income. That's before taxes or insurance, uh, benefits, things like that are taken out. Uh, your credit score is going to be a big identifier on how your credit history looks. Have you paid your payments on time and have a good standing on that credit score and then assets those are going to be things like your liquid savings checking uh, investment accounts and that's what's going to be looked at for your down payment and closing costs and you mentioned your debit and credit score are factors can you elaborate on that a little bit more Absolutely. So debt to income ratio, commonly known as DTI, is looking at, uh, again, outstanding debt. So this is going to be your financial obligations, not necessarily your living expenses. Lenders do take that into consideration. So what you're going to want to do is look at what are the minimum monthly payments that you are billed each month on, say, credit cards, auto loans, maybe student loans. Uh, and then you're going to take that and divide it into the gross monthly income. A very comfortable range for approvals is going to be around 45 uh, percent. So that's a very safe area for you to target. And then also with the credit score, you want to look somewhere around 620 as the bare minimum. That's going to be for all applicants. Maybe you don't have a 620 credit score, which is going to be a conventional loan. Uh, so that's where you hear Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac in the industry commonly come in. You could look at an FHA option. Several lenders are going to allow down to a 580 credit score on FHA. And there are other expenses that go into your mortgage payment besides the loan payment, correct? That is correct. And a lot of first time buyers don't understand that. They're just looking at what is my loan payment going to be? Lenders have to factor in what are the property taxes looking like on that housing payment? What is the homeowner's insurance? And sometimes you may have PMI known as private mortgage insurance that protects the lender if you don't have a 20% down payment. So you really do want to be cognizant that even though you're going to be paying this monthly payment, for the loan, there are additional expenses for the taxes, homeowners insurance, and potential PMI as well. And now that we've covered the basics, can you help us understand what is happening in today's market? Are buyers losing buying power or are they staying steady with the home price decreases offsetting the interest rate increases? Wonderful question. Absolutely, the landscape has changed both in the interest rate uh, you know, world right now, and then we're also seeing a lot of the market softening. I wouldn't necessarily say that we're seeing the market invert in regards to prices going down, but it's not quite as crazy of bidding wars that we saw earlier this year. Now that said, a pre-approval typically is good for about six months. Uh, that's when the credit report is going to be renewed. You're going to want to supply new financials. So if you were looking earlier this year at purchasing a home, you had your pre-approval underway, make sure you talk to your lender to see, based on today's current interest rates, how is that going to impact what you qualify for? You may have been pre-approved earlier in the year at, say, a $500,000 purchase price, and now it may be something lower in the 400,000, 350,000 range. So you really just wanna make sure you work with your lender, stay in communication, and they're gonna do everything they can to help you get into a home. Oh, all helpful tips, Lindsay. Thank you so much for letting us know about them this morning. And for more info, you can visit schoolsfirstfcu.org.